Hello and welcome to another episode of Faith Film Festival. I'm your host, Lorena Jorge. This show features independent films that inspire, give hope, and celebrate faith. Today we have two films with a gritty, mysterious look and are both full of suspense and drama. So let's start off with our first film entry called A Mysterious Way, directed by Phil Warner. Let's take a look. Hey, man. What? Is this the L train? The L train? Mm -hmm. No, I don't believe so. It's not? No, this is the, uh, I believe, uh, yes, the R train. The R train? Yeah. Where does the R train go? Where does it go? Yeah, man. The destination. Oh, <laughs> Atlantic City. Atlantic City? Yeah. But the L train goes to Atlantic City. It does? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of it. I mean, the ticket lady said that the L train goes to Atlantic City. Well, so does the R. Why are you going to Atlantic City? You, uh, you gonna do some gambling? I mean, you don't look like much of a gambler. No, I'm, uh, going to visit my mother, actually. Oh, moms are great, aren't they? Yeah. There's nothing like a mom. No? Nope. Of course I'm a gambler. Who? Oh, yeah, truth be told, I'm almost a compulsive one. <laughs> but hey, who isn't when they go to Atlantic City? I mean, that's the reason most people go to Atlantic City, is to gamble, but not you, though. No. You're gonna go see mom, huh? Yeah. Neat. <laughs> so, uh, what are you reading there, buddy? Who? Yeah. The Bible. Oh, yeah? Which one? I beg your pardon? Which one? Which one? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that book there looks a little jazzy for the Quran, and uh, you don't look Muslim or anything, but I guess you never know these days, right? <laughs> and uh, clearly you're not a Quaker. I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. This is the Bible of Christianity, uh, New International Version. New International Version, huh? Yeah. Neat. So what's your favorite story in there? Story? Yeah, man, what parts really do it for you? <laughs> Do it for me. <laughs> yeah, man, come on. What's your favorite part? I don't know. I like them all. Uh, Job's story is a nice reminder. Oh, yeah? Reminder of what? The importance of faith. You know, I'm actually more of an Old Testament guy myself. Actually, Job is... I appreciate the fact that God had a... Forgive me here, but I appreciate the fact that God had balls. Do you know what I mean? I think Jesus made him a bit of a softy, which is good in its own way. Don't get me wrong. It's good. It's just different, you know? But look at, like, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know? A whole commune of homosexuals. Kaboom! Am I right? Uh, not exactly. Yeah, but then Jesus came along and everything changed. Abruptly, I might add. I mean, first time, honest to God, first time I read through the Bible, I took a break between the two books, the old and the new. I came back after the old. I thought I picked up the wrong Bible. I mean, it threw me for a foot. Honest to God, it did. Jesus, he, he was a nice guy, you know? He was compassionate. He was loving. God was... Let's face it, man. God was a no-nonsense deity, a hard A, a bad man pajama, you know? And really, to me, I mean, it makes perfect sense. It's like Jesus, good cop, God, bad cop, Holy Spirit, the guy behind the mirror, you know? They're like a team. But I, I think, from my recollection at least, that the last real incident of God's wrath is when God blew up Judas in that field after Judas killed Jesus. That was the wrath of God, man. But can you blame him? I mean... Judas was a sellout. <laughs> I'd have blown him up too. But hey, I gotta say this much. You gotta love that water into wine story, huh? Thank God for that, right? So you've read the Bible, I take it? Of course, man. Everyone should. Hey, what's your uh, name tag for? Name tag? Yeah, man, on your back here. Oh, uh, it's my, my job. Uh, oh, yeah? What do you do? I work at my church. I work with kids. So, you're like a minister. A youth minister. Uh, well, that's a noble profession, working with kids. Yeah, I enjoy it. I feel like it's my calling. Hmm. Uh, what do you do? I'm unemployed. My calling hasn't exactly uh, called me yet. I see. But why worry, right? Why worry? I mean, I found my own purpose in my own sort of way. Well, good. Good for you. Hey, can I ask you a question? Sure. And I don't mean to pry. Oh. Okay, good, because I really need to ask you this. Go on. All right, first of all, I fancy myself as somewhat the uh, philosopher, 
Mm. Okay, wait, no, that's not the way to put it. Okay, I fancy myself as somewhat the uninformed philosopher. Now, that is to say that I enjoy delving into the depths of the unknown and the unanswerable, although I am not exactly speaking for myself entirely 100% informed. Well, you don't sound uninformed to me. Oh, but I am, I assure you. So, there's the disclaimer. There you have it. Now, let's get into the delving here. Do you believe in divine intervention? Yes. And you believe in God? Yes. The God of Christianity? Yes, yes, of course. Do you believe in predetermination or free will? Well, that's a difficult because question. Because I believe in free will. Oh? Oh, yeah. Definitely. I believe firmly that every man chooses his own destiny independent of supernatural intervention. Now, I don't mean to discredit anything. I mean, maybe God knows or foresees the choices that we're making, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's making them for us or that he's going to try to alter them. Do you see what I mean? That's one way of looking at it. Okay, like, for example, think... for instance, if I had a, uh, a bomb or something in that case, right? Like C4, like dynamite. And I was going to get on this train, and I was going to blow up you and me and everyone and everything on the train. That was my intention. I planned to do that. Do you think that God would be able to stop me? Yes, I believe he could. How? How? Yeah, how? By what means? By whatever means he would. Yes, but logically, let's discuss this. I mean, would he, uh, would he physically descend from heaven and assume human form? Or would he, I don't know, like send a, a slew of angels? I mean, I mean, how would he physically stop me from blowing up this train? I suppose by, by willing it not to happen. Willing it? Yes. Willing it? Yes, through some means or another, God would will it not to happen. Through an angel? Possibly. Or a human vessel? Perhaps. Okay, so like, for example, he might will you to stop me. <laughs> like you might somehow, I mean, I don't know how, but he might will you to stop me using your body as a vessel. <laughs> yes, I... Your body as a vessel. I suppose that's possible, or maybe he'd make sure you never got on the train in the first place. How would he do that? I don't know. But somehow. Sure. Not necessarily directly by him, but through him, be because of him. Yes. Like uh, a, a delay, maybe. Right. Or by canceling departures. Sure. Or like a faulty ticket. Absolutely. A faulty ticket? What? A faulty ticket. <laughs> I've been given a faulty ticket. I didn't ask for it. It was given to me. I was given a faulty ticket, and as a result, I would more than likely not be allowed to board this train. And if there were a bomb in that case, that might be an example of God preventing me from blowing up the train, therefore divine intervention. Yeah, I suppose. But what if I had the right ticket? A valid ticket, a correct ticket. How would he stop me then? I mean, there's nobody else here but me and you, man. And if he was going to stop me using a human vessel, logic would dictate that uh, it would have to be you that would have to stop me. I wonder. What? Would you be able to? If God willed it, then yes, I believe I could. Yeah. Yeah, but think about it. I mean, if the only thing standing in between me getting on this train and blowing it up was you, you think you'd be able to? That would require a whole lot of strength, Gordon. Strength comes from faith, as they say. Faith? Yes. And what, in your opinion, is faith? What is faith? Yes, what is faith? Well, I'd say a complete trust and belief in something. In God? In God, for some of us, yes. And you have faith that God, through you, could prevent me from getting on this train? Yes. You have no doubts whatsoever. You are absolutely sure of yourself. Not of myself, of him. What about now, Gordon? Now, if I were to pull this trigger, you have faith, Gordon. You have faith, yes or no, that God would stop the bullet. What are you doing? If I pull this trigger, how is God going to prevent this bullet from emptying your skull? Oh, God. Answer the question, Gordon. I don't know. Give me an answer, yes or no. Can God stop bullets? Oh, my God. Don't you dare start crying. Don't you dare start crying. Don't oh you God. dare start crying. Do you understand me? Oh my God, you be please, a man, don't. Gordon. You be a man. Please you don't have don't anything do to fear, remember? You were positive, Gordon. Certain. Not of yourself, Gordon. Of him. Where is your faith, Gordon? Oh my Where God, is please. your faith? Show it to me, Gordon. Please don't Exemplify do Exemplify your faith. I'll give you whatever you want, whatever you want. Please, just don't do this. You're acting like a woman, Gordon. For the love of God, you be a man. You be a man, do you understand me? You conjure up whatever faith you have in that bleeding heart of yours, and you be a man. Look at you. Look. Look at you. Look. Down on your knees, praying to me for mercy. I am not your God, Gordon. Clearly, given this present set of circumstances, I could care less about your personal well-being. <laughs> Gordon, you know, it's, 
It's a sad thing, a guy like you, believe in what you believe. It's all smoke and mirrors, Gordon. You pray to the invisible man long enough and you actually start to believe that he exists. And that misled belief evolves into faith, and that stronghold of faith is inconsistent and unreliable. Are you with me, Gordon? Yes. Are you with me or not? Yes. Look. I lied to you earlier, Gordon. I lied to you and I owe you an apology. I lied to you. <laughs> I told you that I gambled compulsively and that was the reason I was going to Atlantic City. I lied, Gordon. I hate to gamble. I hate it. Because in all of my endeavors, whatever they may be, I don't waste my time with risks or gambles of any kind. I require certainties, Gordon, absolutes. Do you know what one certainty is in our lives, Gordon? <laughs> Oh. Our ability to take them oh. from each other, yes, but also, Gordon, our own lives. <laughs> Suicide, Gordon. It's a noble death. Oh. It's self-inflicted. It's consciously chosen, not by him, Gordon, not by him, but by us. It is the one absolute power that we have over him. And believe me when I tell you, Gordon, this train is never making it to Atlantic City. Now put your hands on your head. No, oh, please don't. Gordon, put your hands on your head. Now, right here, right now, Gordon, you recite the Lord's Prayer for me. And let's find out the answer to the question. Do you know the question, Gordon? No. Do you know the question, Gordon? No. Does God exist? Pray. Pray. Good Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily. Count us our trespasses. We forgive John's trespasses. Count, count, count of three, Gordon. At least not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the key to one. The power. Two. The glory, glory for three. three. Amen. Feeling like he's right here, right now, with you and me, all around, all around me, you know, but nowhere. I'm trying so hard to see him, Gordon. I'm trying so hard, but nothing. Why can't I see him, Gordon? Why can't I see him? He's afraid of what I'll do to him. And he should be. He should be.
That was a classic duel between good and evil, and I like that twist at the end. Well, now we're going to take a quick break. While we do that, make sure to check out our website at netny.net. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Faith Film Festival. I'm Lorena Jorge, and I'm here to bring you inspirational indie films. Now we're going to move on to our next film, directed by Luis C. Alvarez, called 5000. This film follows a kidnapped journalist in Colombia. Let's watch. En una entrevista hace dos años, le preguntaron a Diego Granados acerca de su ateísmo. Entre otras cosas dijo entonces, el problema de los creyentes es que solo rezan por necesidad o conveniencia. ¿Cuándo fue la última vez que se confesó? Nunca me he confesado. ¿Qué lo hizo venir? Estoy aquí por una amiga, por una amiga a la que nunca vi. Que llegaron tarde. No quería caminar. Párelo. Diego Granados. A partir de hoy, usted es un prisionero de guerra de las FARC. Acaba de pasar unos cuantos meses. Todo depende de cómo se porte su familia y sus amiguitos del periódico. La orden es no se habla con ninguno de nosotros, a menos de que se le hable primero. Así que vayas acostumbrando al silencio. Si necesita callar, mi área tiene suficiente espacio. Para eso le dimos tierrita de más. ¿Y no me van a quitar las esposas? ¡Sí! ¡Que se calle la jeta! ¿O es que no entiende español? No. Es mejor que deje las manitas quietas. Y así no escribe más mierda de la que ha escrito. Subió a los cielos y está sentado a la derecha de Dios Padre Todopoderoso. Desde el día de venir a juzgar a todos los vivos y los muertos. Creo en el Espíritu Santo, la Santa Iglesia Católica, la comunión de los santos, el perdón de los pecados, la resurrección de la carne y la vida eterna. Amén. Dios te salve, Reina y Madre de Misericordia, cuida y dulzura esperanza nuestra. Dios te salve, a ti clamamos los desterrados hijos de Eva. A ti suspiramos gimiendo y llorando en este valle de lágrimas. Mira pues, Señor, abogada nuestra, vuelve a nosotros esos tus ojos misericordiosos. Y después de este destierro... Hortensia y Nicanor... Fueron secuestrados en septiembre hace tres años. Su único hijo, Julián, fue secuestrado el año pasado tratando de encontrarlos.
En los últimos 15 años, las FARC se ha convertido en la única alternativa de supervivencia para muchos jóvenes campesinos. Que no habla español, que se quite la ropa. ¡Ya! De la vuelta. Báñese. Padre Santo, yo te ofrezco este rosario por la salud de Nicanor. Señor Todopoderoso y Misericordioso, Dios mío, ten piedad de mi viejo. Señor, sus pulmones están débiles y si este encierro se prolonga por más tiempo, su corazón no va a aguantar. Virgencita, ayúdame a pedirle al Señor que ablande el corazón de estos hombres que nos tienen secuestrados para que nos liberen pronto. Nicanor necesita un médico porque si no se me va a morir y, y yo sin él no, no soy capaz de aguantar este encierro, Señor. También te pido por el hombre que está aquí al lado, secuestrado igual que nosotros. No lo dejes caer en la desesperanza. Preserva de su salud y permite de recobrar pronto su libertad para que pueda volver a reunirse con sus seres queridos. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué se lo llevaste, señor? ¡Cállate! Yo sin él no puedo. Ya, ¡Cállate! No puedo. ¡Cállate! Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino y hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos el pan de cada día y, y perdona nuestras ofensas así como nosotros debemos perdonar a los que nos ofenden. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros los pecadores ahora y a la hora de nuestra muerte. Bendita tú eres entre to todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. Creo en Padre Dios Todopoderoso, Creador del cielo y de la tierra, como en un principio, ahora y siempre, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Amén. Señor, sácanos de aquí. No nos abandones. 
No nos dejes sometidos a este encierro, a esta oscuridad. Danos fuerza para sobrevivir. No permitas que el miedo o la zozobra nos arrebaten la esperanza. Acaba con esta violencia. No dejes que se olviden de nosotros. No nos deje aquí solos. Sálvanos de estos niños jugando a la guerra. Camina, a ver que no tenemos todo el día. Camina a ver que estamos coches. Espere. Si los coge el ejército, lo quebramos. Diego Granados fue liberado después de un año. Aún trabaja como periodista. Hortensia continúa secuestrada. That was intense. That shows you can be inspired by faith in the most unlikely places. If you want to learn more about today's films, make sure to check out our website at netny.net, where you can cast your vote for your favorite films. Remember, the first faith film screening event is right around the corner, where we will be showing the top six films from this season at a theater in New York. And you won't want to miss it. So that's all for today. I'll see you in the next episode of Faith Film Festival.